So in this video, we're going to look at a very important number called the ionization constant of water. Now, before we get to what we mean by the ionization constant, we need to learn a little something about water molecules. Now, water is a substance that can be referred to as amphoteric. Now, an amphoteric substance is a substance that can act as an acid in some cases and act as a base in other cases. So water molecules can in fact act as acids and bases in different circumstances. So this is very important to understand the ionization constant of water. Water can both accept protons by acting as a base or donate protons by acting as an acid. What this leads to is uh, this very interesting and important chemical reaction that can occur. This chemical reaction is called the self-ionization of water and it is basically just that, is when two water molecules react with one another and convert one another to ions. So this equation here is the equation for the reaction that we call the self-ionization of water. And this self-ionization of water actually demonstrates water acting as both an acid and a base in the one reaction. Because what we mean by that is that we have this water molecule here, and basically all that's happening is we're taking one hydrogen from this one uh, proton from this water molecule, and we're donating it to this water molecule here. So by taking one proton from heat from this water molecule, we produce a hydroxide ion, and by adding the proton to this water molecule, we produce a hydronium ion. And so because this water molecule is donating a proton, we can refer to it as an acid. Because this water molecule is accepting the proton, it is acting as a base. So this self-ionization of water shows water acting as both an acid and a base in one reaction. Now, like any chemical equation, the self-ionization of water has an equilibrium constant. And it's given by this equation here. So the, product, the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactant. So that is the, the, the equation for the equilibrium constant of water. And so we know that equilibrium constants are just that. They are constant. Now, because in any aqueous solution, the number of water molecules will outnumber the, uh, the number of any other type of particle by a very large amount. If we have an aqueous solution of any sort of salt, for example, even though there are salt ions, even though we do have ions in that solution, we're still going to have many, many, many more water molecules than we'd have ions. And that what that means is that in any aqueous solution or in any glass of water, the concentration of water is in fact going to be ridiculously high. Almost everything in a glass of water is in fact water. So the more per litre value for, uh, for H2O in water is very high very, very high. Because it's so high, because it outnumbers almost anything else in the water or in a solution, it is also treated as constant. Pretty much any, pretty much the entire, uh, pretty much an entire sample of any solution is made up of water with, with, the, with the things dissolved in the solution taking up only a very small part. So the concentration of water is a constant. And what that means, if we have something divided by a constant equaling constant. That means that this top row, this numerator here, must it's must on its own also be a constant. So what this tells us is that this product here, the product of the concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide is equal to a constant. And we call this constant the ionization constant of water. And we denote it by K subscript W. So K subscript W is the ionization constant of water. It is the product of the concentration of hydronium with the concentration of hydroxide. And it equals this number here. And the units are mole per liter squared because we have two mole per liter uh, values being multiplied together. 
And so this is true for any aqueous solution. No matter what the aqueous solution is, this is here, this cell ionization constant is true. So for any uh, acid, acidic solution, any basic solution, any sort of solution, if we multiply the concentration of hydronium by the concentration of hydroxide, we will get this number here. We will get 10 to the negative 14 mole per liter squared, given that we're at room temperature. So this is this is this this is the ionization cons, constant of water at 25 degrees Celsius. It will change slightly at other temperatures, but it is true. So this is very important. for any aqueous solution. And what that means is that if we know the concentration of hydronium ions in a solution, we can simply use this equation to then figure out the, con the number, uh, the concentration of hydroxide ions in that solution. So it's true for any aqueous solution. And that makes sense, right? Because even if we have other things floating around in our solution, if we have other things floating around in our solution, uh, in any solution, water will be self-ionizing. If we have sort of some other salts dissolved in our solution, so we have lots of other ions floating around in our glass of water, the water molecules in that glass of water are still going to be uh, self-ionizing in this way. And so the equilibrium constant for this reaction will still be the same. And as a result, this, uh, this product in the numerator of our equilibrium constant expression, therefore, must also be a constant because no matter what else is floating around, other ions that are making it an aqueous solution rather than just a pure glass of water uh, do not affect the fact that this self ionization of water is still happening. If this self ionization is still happening, then this equation still holds. This here is constant and this is constant, which means that this numerator is also constant. So, this is what's important the ionization constant of water is equal to 10 to the negative 14 and it is equal to the concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide. So we're going to use this in a brief example. So what we've done is, is I've got this, this basic solution, I've been doing a few tests in the lab and I've got this, this basic solution here. I've got solution like this stock standard solution I've dissolved some sort of base some sort of base in it and after I've dissolved so we've got this basic solution and because I've just I've taken a glass of water dissolved some sort of base in it I've come up with this solution now we've run a few tests on this solution what I've found out is that the concentration of hydroxide is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 mole per litre. Now, I want to figure out the pH of this basic solution. However, I don't have any of the appropriate tools. The only tools I have allow me to calculate the concentration of hydroxide in the solution. So what I want to do is I want to go from the concentration of hydroxide to a pH value. And we know from our previous knowledge that pH is equal to negative, the negative logarithm of the concentration of hydronium ions. So we know that already. So we're going to use this formula here to help us calculate the pH of this solution. So the concentration of hydroxide is this. So if we rearrange this equation here, we get that concentration of hydronium ions is equal to 10 to the negative 14 divided by 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3. We've got 10 to the negative 14 divided by the concentration of hydroxide and we've subbed that value in here. What this comes out to be is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 12 mole per litre. From there we can simply go write down that the pH is equal to the negative logarithm of this number So if we put that into our calculator, what we end up with is that we have a pH of 11.4. So that's how we can quite easily translate between the concentrations of hydroxide ions and the concentration of hydronium ions 
And taking advantage of that, we can then calculate the pH of a solution.